Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Thank you guys for uh, joining me today. Just going to go live. I got a, I got a little topic I want to touch on and then really uh, do a Q&A here with the chat for any of you guys who have any questions. Feel free to ask them. I'll try to answer as many as I can here. Um, I do have a topic that I want to touch on. Just something that's kind of been on my heart the last couple of days. I've been thinking about it a lot. So figure why not go live and talk about it with you guys and get some feedback man just put it out there um give a quick shout out to some of the newest patrons we have within just the last like two days man i put out a new uh song exclusive to patreon right now um all of my music's uploaded over there I put out a new song put out the snippet on facebook and youtube and then within the last two days man got a handful of new patrons i want to give you guys a shout out and say thank you so much for supporting my work so uh give a quick shout out to megan sean karen sydney john nay laura manson and scott thank you guys for uh coming on and supporting my work i appreciate that if you want to do that head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker Uh, There you can support my work for any level of giving, anywhere from a dollar to whatever you're able to do. Um, It really means the world. And you also get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystic sessions, as well as my entire discography of music, 10 plus albums. And when I'm done recording a song, I'm constantly working on new music. When a song is done, it's uploaded straight there before it's um, going to be available to the general public. And since I just put out an album, it's going to be, you know, several months before you're privy to all that new stuff. So head on over there, check that out. And it's a great way to support my work. Um, subject matter today, I want to talk a little bit about angelic encounters, miracles, um, things like this, seeing into the other realms. Um, I had a conversation yesterday with a, with a friend who was talking about the charismatic movement, the Christian charismatic circles and how Um, they're big on encountering, encountering God, encountering Jesus, angels, demons, like all of these things, like in, in, in the other realms of having these encounters and experiences. But, um, I think there comes a time when we, we just got to quit pursuing that stuff. Like that's the goal is to encounter something in the other realm. And I've been there for years, man. I've been there, um, in the Christian circles, in the Christian movements, you want to get prayed for just so you can fall out, feel the euphoria, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. But where does that start? Like, uh, where does it stop? Like, 
what's the point of the encounter? I think that all of these encounters should have a, a, a point to them, um, whether we're contacting angels, right? I mean, people want to see something. You want proof that the other side is uh, is real, that entities are there, that they're watching over you, that you're protected. Uh, maybe l like myself, I just want to understand how the universe works. Who are these angels? What are they? Can they hear me? Are they watching? Can they help? You know, all of these type of things. But once you have these encounters, then what? Then what do you do? Um, when you see miracles, when God has provided for you when there seemed to be no way out and God is always taking care of you. Um, there's different things. There's character traits that is imparted to you when you uh, go through that stuff of feeling like you're going to freak out or lose everything. And then God always comes through at the last moment, an unexpected check, you know, whatever it is. And I've talked to so many people and I've had that happen in my life so many times where you have these miracles that happen when it feels like you're about to lose it all. When, you know, the bill collectors come knocking or whatever the case is, just like Paul and Silas in prison at the 11th hour, the angels stepped in and freed them from their prison. It was into to, to the 11th hour right at the last moment. And so usually that's when we see the miracles is at the last moment. But I really feel like these testings and things that we go through in our life are there to um, to try us to, and to, to test us. Right. If they're if they're test, you know, they're, you know, you're being tested and to see how you're going to react, how you're going to respond, if you're going to respond with love, if you're going to panic and freak out and and. I didn't trust God to begin with, you know, like uh, Job's wife said, Job, uh, you know, cuss him and die. Go ahead and cuss God and die. All this bad stuff's happening to you. Just go ahead and cuss God and die, you know. And that's kind of like what the test is to see if you really have faith, if you really believe what you say you believe. Because, you know, anybody can believe God on the mountaintop. Anybody can believe God when everything is going good. But what about believing God when everything's coming against you, when you doesn't you don't have anything you don't know where you're going to get your next meal i mean how many of us have been there um so this what that's why these testings and stuff happen to us and the lord provides with miracles i've heard it said and it kind of challenged my faith that god doesn't want you to be reliant upon miracles like you have to provide you have to be looking for miracles your whole life to get through like you have to be able to um, have your faith and have it in, in practice and be able to kind of develop things like understand where you're going to get your, your meals from, understand where your calling is. And you're not sitting there looking for other people to help you almost. You know what I'm saying? That you can have some kind of stability within your life financially or whatever. Um, so the, these miracles come. And the question is, how many miracles do you need? Like I've several months back, I remember just pulling out my phone and just trying to remember all the miracles that I've seen God provide for me and my family and all of the miracles I've seen of healings, people being healed through prayer, um, all, all of the supernatural things. You want to remember them. You want to build a monument. You want to understand because when it happens again, you need a frame of reference. Okay. If God took care of me, then he's going to take care of me now. If it's, it's the same faith that you bring over, like I was talking about, like if you know, the same faith that it takes to pay a $50 bill is going to be the same faith it takes to pay a $5,000 bill, whatever level you are in trusting God or whatever level you are in your spiritual development or where, wherever you are in life, it's the same faith that's going to get you through. So, understanding that how many miracles do we need before we start trusting God? How many angelic encounters experiences do we need until we're sent forth with the message to deliver um, in the charismatic circles going back? They just want to have more and more and more. There's never enough encounters with God, which I believe that we are to encounter God daily in everything. Uh, we are to see miracles. We are to see manifestation and I get into it in my music. I talk about it on the podcast. I love to talk about these encounters. I love to 
um, recount them and remember them and question them and ask other people, okay, this is what I've seen. What have you seen? So I love to talk about it. Um, it, it sometimes it gets to a point where people, especially in the churches, they try to one up each other on encounters. They try to one up. Okay, well, you've seen that. Well, I've seen this. I've seen this. I've seen that. And it's cool if we're bragging on God or whatever. But like if you, you know, I'm more spiritual or I've talked with the dead or I've traveled dimensions. I've I've talked to people trying to build and doing this podcast over the years where people, they they do the one up thing. Well, I can uh, communicate with angels as soon as I close my eyes. Well, I can travel dimensions when I close my eyes and no one else can do this. And I'm the only one. It gets re- uh, with this weird conversation like, OK, like if this if these encounters that you're having aren't birthing humility within you, I think something's wrong. If these encounters that you're having aren't um, creating in you a clean heart to be practical to a dying world or a world that's in, in need of whatever you have to offer, whatever you can pull out of that experience, whether we're talking about angelic encounters or demonic encounters. Like why? Understand how how did this happen? A demonic attack What did I do to set myself up for this type of attack, right? Um, And and so there's things you learn from that that you can make practical. Look, don't do this. And my story, definitely, I was into occultism and and Satanism and things like that and all kind of witchcraft, doing crazy spells and enchantments. I got possessed, started going crazy, stuff like that. Um, I could tell you what not to do. Like those demonic encounters that I went through, I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. So I can tell you the concoction that I did and that route ends there. They want you mad. They want you possessed. They want you crazy. They want you drooling on yourself. They essentially want you to die like, uh, um, what's his name? Crowley, Alistair Crowley, geeked out of his mind, drooling on yourself. And not having any any function and taking your mind from you. So going through those encounters, demonic encounters, and I can tell you my story. Trust me, I traveled to churches over the years, many churches telling my story and got the round of applause and told you the story. But it was to learn what not to do. The same way with being successful, pursuing your dreams. I can tell you what not to do, what you're not going to get any results from, and then things that you can do to apply to your life to get results. There's things you can do, practical things. Some of it in my practice includes angelic contact. I mean, when we're spending time being mindful in meditation, listening to God, traveling the astral realms, whatever it is, all of that stuff is so beautiful. Um, But it comes down to a point. I I haven't had a lot of like deep, crazy encounters in a long time. Um, My life is pretty much impacted from the encounters that I've already had. And I feel like at this point, I want more. I want to see more light beings. I want to cast out more demons. You know what I'm saying? I want to, I want to be, um, impactful in the spirit realm which i am but as far as like having a being encounter you or you're in contact with a et light ship or an angelic presence or the archangel michael or whatever it is how many does it take before you kind of get the messages that they're bringing the word angel means messenger they're bringing you a message if we look in the scriptures they would have angelic encounters and it changed their life forever like they would have one encounter Okay. All right. I believe you, God. I'm going to do, I'm going to carry this message that you've brought me. And it, it, it came with se- like consequences. It came with s- severity at times. Um, people who have had these encounters, we look at the Israelites, right? I mean, we could just look at that, that story and those archetypes of these people. They've seen God provide for them in so many ways. Uh, wrote down a couple here. They had the, uh, the miracle of the Red Sea parting. They seen God said, look, I got you guys. I'm going to lead you out of captivity. Go through this ocean and say, we can't, how are we going to get through the ocean? Let me part it for you. Go. I'm going to make a way where there is no way, which is who God is, right? Uh, They seen God provide for them with manna from heaven. They had nothing to eat. They had, couldn't pay their bills, whatever the case is. God provided for the Israelites with manna from heaven. Just get up, look, go out there, grab it, eat it. It's, it's there for you. I got you. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord that provides. 
They've seen the earth open up and swallow up their enemies. All of these people trying to attack them and kill them. The Lord opened up the ground and they fell in the earth and died. Aaron's rod he had this miracle staff that would bud and show uh, um, buds on it. And I don't I don't know exactly the, the, the meaning behind that, but that was a miracle, right? Have a, a rod that, that budded. Uh, Moses' staff. You know, when, when the Israelites were attacked by all these serpents, and trust me, all this is symbolic stuff. If you go ahead and do, do the symbology, the serpents, these people being attacked by these serpents, serpents could be false wisdom, false knowledge, because the serpent represents wisdom in the scriptures. Um, they were attacked by it, and they were dying from this, this these bites. And uh, the only way that they were to be healed, it was if uh, Moses took one of the serpents, put it on his staff and held it up and and looked at and everybody who looked upon the serpent was healed if they looked at it. And obviously that's, that's symbolic for Christ being lifted up on the cross as well. If we look at the cross, if we understand who Jesus is for us and what happened, what he did for us, then we'll be healed as well if we understand that and believe it. And uh, so all of these things are parables, but. It's still understanding. They had so many more, man. Uh, the uh, the battle at Jericho's wall where they marched around the city of Jericho seven times and then all shouted with a large uh, sh shout and blew the trumpets and the walls crashed. Uh, the, the sun stood still for an entire day. Like all of these miracles that God's showing you. Look, I'm here with you. I care about you or whatever. And they still complained. They still wanted more. This isn't enough. I want this manna doesn't you can't even taste this manna. It doesn't even taste like chicken. You know what I'm saying? And they just found at, at, through all of these miracles, they were still complaining of these things. Right. And it's a picture of us when we come out of um, Egypt. Egypt is our land of bondage, whatever that was for you. Um, I know people come out of prostitution. I came out of dark witchcraft and drug addiction and alcohol addiction and just a bad person. God changed my life, brought me out of Egypt into the promised land. And at times people want to look back. You complain, well, it was better back then. I had more friends when I was a prostitute, more people cared about me when I was this. So when I was a heroin addict, I was hanging out with more heroin addicts and I felt like they genuinely cared about me. Now I'm in the church and you people are just talking crap about me. Whatever the case is, like you always look like, man, I, I didn't have it so bad after all or whatever when I was in Egypt. And after seeing all of these miracles that's been done in your life, we people look back. The Israelites look back and it's a, Israelites are a picture of us. We look back and we complain, man, I didn't you know, I wish it was still this way. I wish I could still party. I wish I could still go to the club or whatever. But you can't. Right. How many miracles does it take to you? believe God and then you start walking taking those steps of faith those leaps of faith to your destiny to your calling how many angelic encounters does it have do you have to have to, before you take the message that the messengers angels or messengers vibrations spirits thought, thought forms thought patterns they impart these things to you from God how many encounters with these beings does it take for you to deliver the message, to go forth and take it to the masses? Most people are just waiting for more. I feel like if I did that at this point, if I continue to want to have more encounters, which I'm, I'm for it, like I'm, I'm not closed off to it. And I hope that just saying this isn't creating it, that I'm closing myself off to it, but understanding that it's a responsibility that how many does it take a week? Like I said, we can, we can recant, we can go back, we can look at all of the encounters and all of the miracles. And trust me, this is what I do on this podcast, right? I talk about this stuff. I talk about these encounters. I question other people in their encounters and, and learn how to make that stuff practical. Is it attainable? Are you special? What happened? I love talking about this stuff, but you have to take the encounter in the in the experience and make it practical. Do something with it. It's not just for the hell of it. It's not just to entertain you. Oh man, cuz like in the churches, man, they just they just go on and on and on with this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um every 
service, every, oh man, did you see what God did? Oh, do you fall on the ground? And all of the falling out and the rolling and the spiritual encounter that happens at church, there's a lot of other churches and other people who question that stuff. They don't believe it's real. Um, the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's so that you can be witnesses, that you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And for, you know, it's scripture says be being filled. But after that initial and in, in filling, you're supposed to be sent. These people encountered Jesus, God in the flesh, and they were sent. They didn't have to keep coming back and keep coming back. Like he touched their heart and he changed them. He healed their ailments. He healed their sickness. They went out. They were sent. They had their message and, and, and they proclaimed it. Um, I feel like we would be spoiled brats to continue to have these angelic encounters or demonic encounters or whatever the case is and to feel like you need more just to keep coming back. And I'm talking about this. Um, I look at my psilocybin encounters, which, you know, we <laughs> changed my life. So the cyber mushrooms on a men's retreat, um, we encountered the angelic realms, the golden teachers changed my life. I'm doing this now because of those encounters. 100 percent, not just because of those, but it played a part of the alchemy. Um, blew my head off. Crazy. Otherworldly traveling dimensions, talking to angels, having a life review, all of this stuff. And I knew that like the next I was excited that I had touched eternity, but I knew it was going to take months to unpack what this stuff was like, man, how do I manifest this? How do I bring this vision that I have of myself in the ether, in my mind, my higher self? How do I bring that person out? You know, I knew it was going to be a journey. And I was ready for it. So I was excited to get back home to my family, you know, and to, to start doing the practical steps. Changed my life. And I knew that there was no way I was going to go out and do it again next weekend or the next day. And some of my friends who were with me, um, evidently, I don't think we had the, the same encounter. Not everybody. Um, but they were like, I'm going to do this again next week, bro. I'm getting some more and I'm going out next week. I'm like, next week? We totally didn't experience the same thing for you to have this divine encounter, which I don't think they did. So I, I, I really can't hold it to them. They may, maybe even that's a competition thing. That's like how phenomenal and life changing it was for me. They're like, oh, it was phenomenal for me too. But I really don't, obviously, right? Obviously it wasn't that type of in encounter for you to just want to go out there and do it again next weekend to have fun doing it and i'll i'll say this i'll you know that stuff is not to be played with it's a medicine for those who are sick for those who are needing answers right um and if you abuse any medicine you're going to be in trouble i will say that that person did go out the following weekend and did it with other friends in a different atmosphere and it wasn't approached with um respect and honor like we did with our initial encounter there was fasting with us uh, we did chanting and breath work and we all was going into this thing as a life review to find out the next steps of our path and we got that the majority this other person came later and wasn't privy to all that stuff but um that person went out the following week with other people and had a bad encounter a very bad encounter because the uh, set and setting is big when it comes to that. You have to have the intention. It, I mean, it took months before I even wanted to, to think about doing something like that. But that person went out and had a totally different encounter and had a bad trip, if you want to call it that. Uh, but you can even learn from the bad trips, hopefully. Right. The He learns, OK, I got to respect this stuff. I can't just do this for fun can't just do it at a party or whatever the case is. Hopefully he learned from that encounter, which was otherworldly, right? If you have a bad encounter, demons are approaching you, your mind's working weird, you're receiving weird stuff, feeling the emotions, feeling the music, feeling the intentions of the people around you. Like if you're in a bad setting and you do that, hopefully you learn for that. This person has learned. And I, I'm pretty sure that, that they have at this point. But with that being said, just to go out and want more and want more and want more. When does it stop? When 
is it enough? When are you finally going to be the embodiment of the concepts that were imparted to you? Biblically, like I said, like a lot of times these people had one encounter, one and they were, they were set. Their whole life was changed from that encounter. We, I've had many. I've had many. If I never had another one, I'd be content. I really would. I'll continue to talk about it. I'll continue to find creative ways to put it in my music. So now at the point now, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not hung up on having more, which I'm not closed off to it either. I am still having those encounters, but they've changed at this point. I'm trying to find creative ways to articulate the information and bring it to the people. So essentially you don't have to do that. You don't have to get with uh, all of your friends and plan a trip and try to find psilocybin or whatever and go out and have this encounter. Like you can, if it's calling you, if it's beckoning you, then you have to do it. I put it that way, but you don't, you don't have to do it to get the information. If we can go in as shamans, get the information, bring it out, and try our best to relate it to the people in a practical way of how they can apply these great philosophies, these great encounters and experiences, if we can bring them and articulate them in a way that we can share with people that it will have impact upon their lives. That's where I'm at now. I'm trying to find creative ideas to study, uh, or or to to get out the information that I've spent years studying these encounters the the books the ancient holy books getting all the information out of there I'm trying now I'm trying to articulate it and get it out there creative ways through music through podcasting through casual conversation through speaking truth through speaking my truth um finding creative ways and it's working it's working. That's where I am. Everybody's in different places. Some people are listening and you've never had an encounter. You want one. You're still on the fence. You you might not even believe that it's possible or whatever the case is. Everybody's at different places. Whatever place that you are in for your level of expectancy, that's where God will meet you. But it but it's not just about the encounter. It's not just about I met with angels. Angels watch over me. I can travel and talk to them. What are they telling you? What are they telling you? Are you talking to all these angels? What are they telling you? Are they giving you some some insight on life, on eternity, like how to make it practical? You know, and and you, I, I question the messenger if it's not giving you something that's going to help you, something that's going to confuse you, or just um make you feel haughty, make you feel prideful that you're meeting with the Octurians or the, the green light beings or whatever, the order of Melchizedek, whatever it is that you're meeting with, I question that. And, um, and if it's just about encounter, about encounter, about encounter, um, I think we feel like spoiled brats. I want more. I'm not, I'm not satisfied. We have to question our hearts, question our motives, man. You bite off more than you can chew. So, and I, I, but I'll say this there for for me, you know, there's also coming to this. I'm just be open. Like I'm continuing to work on music. I've, I just now posted on Facebook just like a couple days ago, um, all the songs that I've ever written and ever co-written over the years since 2004, 2005, once I started writing music, there's a couple on there that I got to go back and edit because I'm still there's a bunch of songs that I've done over the years, right? I've done all of these songs and uh, I'm putting them out there. So now it's like, it's kind of affecting me a, a, just a little bit because I've said all of this stuff. I've used all of these rhyming words. I've talked about how many times can you rhyme Kundalini? How many times can you talk about an angelic encounter or brag about an angelic encounter and find ways to rhyme it um, with this type of music, spirituality and things. I've, I'm like four albums deep. A lot of the stuff I'm starting to repeat myself. I'm over almost 200 songs in on that list. A lot of it's starting to repeat myself. I don't want to repeat myself. I think it's tacky. 
Um, I want to co- keep continue come up coming up with innovative rhyming skills, uh, rhyming schemes, rhyming words, um, new words. I've already exhausted myself with the studies over the years and tried to articulate m- the majority of that stuff in the music. And now I'm trying to I'm starting to s- see myself repeating the same words. I mean, how many times can you rhyme, shine, light, bright, night, sight, fight, might? You know what I'm saying? Kundalini. All, even all of the crazy words that you go in and study and get. So I, I don't hit the books and I don't study like I used to. I don't watch two, three hour documentaries like I used to. There was a time and place for that. I don't do that anymore. I, like I said, now I'm at the place where I'm trying to articulate everything that I've learned, everything that I've experienced, articulate it for the best way to have the most impact for people to change lives, to encourage people, to equip people, and to send people out. Um, Maybe that's having some bearing on what, what I'm getting out in the music. It's definitely having some bearing on that. If I'm not continuing to study and to look and they're like, what is some cool stuff? Oh, and just keep getting it. I, I think I still have to do that a little bit. Like I still, I still read. I still spend quiet time. I'm, I'm still spiritual, right? So there's going to be stuff that comes. There's still new stuff that comes. And thank God that I sometimes I get on these little tangents and they and they it starts coming and I just start writing it and it comes out really good. So that's still happening. But as far as embracing new concepts, some of that kind of old for me i'm still at this point trying to find our ways to articulate the information the knowledge and things i've already studied the the life experiences all of this stuff trying to um find ways to uh articulate that and get it out make it practical for people um but i'll say this because with the music and with the podcasts I don't think that my message has changed from day one. Like even, even the early Christian <clears throat> message, the early Christian truth seeker, whatever. Like I still f- see the same silver lining running through all of my songs, running through everything, which is about encountering God, spiritual warfare, repentance, and how beautiful God is. Repentance is as teshuvah. Simply turn from the things that are killing you. Not standing on the street corner yelling out, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You're going to die. I've done that. I've done that. But um, the repentance is like turn from the things that are killing you. If you're addicted to heroin, stop. Turn from it. Draw close to God. He will draw close to you. If you're in over your head in witchcraft and demonic and possession, turn from that. It's killing you. Turn or you're a struggling alcoholic, turn from that, repent, look to Christ, look to anything that um, is beautiful. Think upon these things. That's still my message. How beautiful Christ is. That's still that's impact my life and changed my life forever. It's in almost in every song, even if it's coded in, in such a way. But everything comes from that aspect, like everything is written from the aspect of all of these life experiences that I've had the good, the bad, the ugly, everything together, just approaching it, looking at it from that aspect of who I am. Um, spiritual warfare <laughs> early on, it was like when I did gospel rap, like in, and we can go back to 2004, 2005. First album was in 2006. I had demos and stuff before that, but it was about killing demons, shooting them with guns killing demons and the devil don't want none of this and the devil is my enemy shooting at you and all this kind of stuff um spiritual warfare still is in my music but in a more mature manner of how to (laughs) embody that and practical things you can do to walk in the light to um understand that there's things you can do to prevent these things, these entities being in your life or leeching on you or whatever the case is or negative people being around you. So that stuff is still in my music articulated, you know, and I'll I'll go into a lot of different details about that. So, um, all of that stuff is still in my music, but I'm looking for creative ways to get it out. And I'm over 10 albums in almost 200 songs in. And I'm, I, I don't think the message has changed. I think that 
I'm still just trying to find ways to articulate it. Creative ways. Creative ways that nobody's doing. I don't want to just see somebody copy it and be a good imitation of that person. Um, part of it, of being a creator made in the image of a creator, I want to create something that nobody else has done. What if like God, Yahweh, came behind another God? Oh, you know, he did that. He made people. Let me make some people. You know what I'm saying? And just copied what everybody else is doing. That's and that's what church folks are doing. When I was in gospel rap, they hear stuff on the radio. They recreate it and put their spin on it. That's what they do. I, that I had to get out of that. That's you're not creating anything. You're imitating and you're and you're you're mimicking what other people are creating and bringing to the table. I think us as people of the kingdom, as as being filled with the the breath and the life force of God, that we are to. Uh, be on the cutting edge when it comes to music. And I really do think that uh, um, I've been been true to that for the most part. Like my stuff is like, you can't say, oh, that sounds like this guy or that sounds like this guy. You're definitely going to hear influences of people within my music. Um, you're going to hear influences because I, I do listen to other music and that stuff comes through. But it's about taking it all and just being eclectic and bringing something new to the table that nobody's done creating music, creating art, whatever art that is that you like, that you've created, that you've, um, that's in it, it reflects back to God, whatever it is, you are a little creator. You are made in the image and likeness of your, of your father, your creator. And I, like I've been saying, and it really, I think this goes deep, but I think that it's the highest form of worship. When we as little creators made in the image of our father, when we begin to create, we reflect that. And it's the highest form of worship. At a boy, that's my boy. Look at him, look at her. That's my daughter. Look at her. She's so creative. She's just like me. Oh, she's getting angry. Yep, she's getting angry at the things I get angry at. She's just like me. You don't like being used and abused. Yep, me neither. You know what I'm saying? We're made in the image and likeness of our Father, and we are that expression. And the same things like when we look at the Bible, when we look at the Old Testament, and the way that Yahweh interacted with other nations, and the way He reacted toward His creation and his um his people like we are the same way we get jealous we get mad we get angry we get upset we get confused we regret things at times and all of this stuff is an expression as we look back at ourselves um through the scriptures as we're looking into a mirror even as we read the bible home sauces in the, in the chat he just keeps saying dmt 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 over and over i'll say this bro um and and I still feel like if I was to want to do DMT, that it would be like, okay, what's next for me? Yeah, I want something else. Like, I'd be a spoiled brat to go and try to, I feel like I'd be a spoiled brat to pursue that right now where I'm at. This is where I'm at now. Maybe a year, two years, six years, 10 years from now, we never know. We, we can't never say never. Justin Bieber. Um... But I feel like I'll be a spoiled brat. And especially when my psilocybin encounter, the big one, the hero dose was like a DMT trip. I was just thinking that the first the first psilocybin I had encounter I had was good, very introspective, connecting with God, philosophical life review going within. I did. I closed my eyes. I would see shapes and ears and all this beautiful colors and stuff. It was beautiful. Um, went into the second encounter with all of my friends and um, was expecting a similar thing. I was speaking on podcasts like I know it all. I was doing interviews. Oh, yes, I was. I did a psilocybin encounter this weekend and uh, really philosophical. And I was just kind of speaking as an expert, went in, got some other friends that, who have done it for the first time and stuff and blew my head off. I felt my spirit leaving my body. And traveling the ethers and being communicated with angels and I wasn't ready for that because I, that's what I um what I've heard about for the DMT or the or the ayahuasca um and I didn't wasn't expecting uh, psilocybin mushrooms to be able to do that to to you um it did it and um uh, was next level for me man um I I wanted to to play this one day but I probably uh. I don't want to get, you know, I'm really weird on the copyright strike, but if you go and watch the, um, um, Dr. Strange movie, Marvel, Dr. Strange, I believe it's Marvel. 
um, he has an encounter where his teacher is this woman and she pushes him out of his body and shows him the ether and he's traveling in his colors and shapes and gears and he's being but as he's traveling he's being led by this voice it's okay look around you you are more than your body you know all of this kind of stuff being led and uh that that scene was like a trigger man because it was so much like the psilocybin encounter that i did were like it literally was that all the way the shapes, the colors, the being led, seeing all of this beautiful stuff, scary stuff, crazy stuff, feeling like you're dying, whatever. But then there's this woman, an angelic voice, soft, soothing, communicating with you throughout the whole encounter. Who's not there in person. This is what I've deemed the golden teachers. And watching that scene took me back to, to that encounter. Um, it was beautiful. So to come back from that and be like, yep, I'm ready to go again. I'm a psychonaut. I want to go and get some more information. Feel like be a spoiled brat just to continue to go, especially if you didn't learn anything. I just love the encounters, bro. I, I spend a lot of time in the in the astral realm. I just this is what I do, man. You know, everybody has their own thing. People go to, you know, raves. People go to um, a lot of festivals, which are glorified raves, hippie raves. You know what I'm saying? And they just go there and they, they do this type of stuff. But it's like, I mean, that's that's their lifestyle, though. Like that has become what they do. You know, that becomes who they are. I don't think we're supposed to be. I really do think that it's supposed to be something that um is sacred. I think that we're supposed to respect the plant teachers. I think we're supposed to respect the angels. I think we're supposed to respect the demons. I'm honored. I thank the most high that I have encountered those demons at such a young age as I did and lived to talk about it. Like I'm still here. I'm still here. I get to talk about it in past tense. There's many people who are still going through that stuff now. And so that's where you share the wisdom, how to come out of that through prayer. Um, somebody in the chat, um, like Marinot arise maybe um, it's really small but it says she's the person says uh out of bodies are fun and yet the real treats and experiences are in body that's good yeah i know like that's the thing like understanding that people want to leave their body you're trying to do things to leave your body you're trying to do mushrooms peyote dmt whatever to leave your body we're doing mantras and chants to leave our body and this person says the real treat is within the body. When you go within, the kingdom of heaven is within. You go within and experience everything. You go within to commune with you, your creator. Understanding as above, so below. It's beautiful because we can travel through both aspects and understand that God is within and also without. And we have to learn to commune with God there. So as far as me, where I am now, as far as like wanting encounter, I'm open for encounter. Dear God, I'm putting that, I'm open, but I'm not seeking like, okay, what are the angels doing? Angels, grab an angel, catch a leprechaun, tell me the secrets of the universe. I've already done that. I've literally done that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's beautiful. All of it's beautiful. And the revelation continues to grow. I'm never at a place where I claim to know it all. I want to have more. I'm going to have more. I say that with this being said, but right now, understanding the way that God communicates the majority of the way with me now, as far as having these encounters with the divine for me is right. I'm glad I'm thankful for this, but it's, it's an overwhelming, um, um, in, overwhelming encounters with synchronicities, um, where doors are opened like, and it even comes to the guests that I have on the podcast that, um, I will, the person will email, check this, like somebody will email me, a person I've never heard of emails me um, and says, hey, this is my work. I'd love to come on your show, blah, 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 two weeks later. And, and for some reason, I said no to this person. I thought they were too religious. I'll be honest. Um, I said no. And then two weeks later, I get an email from a fan who's just asking me about I was ask, actually asking me about my symbol and what it means and stuff. And then pers went on to say, Hey, have you ever heard of this person's work? And I said, no, but I'll look them up because I try to 
you know, you guys are the audience. What, who, who would you guys like to hear me talk to? You probably, as far as doing the research, I don't do the research as much. Most of these people, the majority of them are people that I have interest in. So there's always new people, new information that's coming. So I, I do try to let you guys refer guests to the show, you know, and, um, um, I said, I'll, I'll check this person out. I Googled the name. The name didn't ring a bell, but I looked at the books and I said, these books are familiar. So I went to my email, typed in the name. Sure enough, two weeks later, um, two weeks earlier, the, uh, that, that person had emailed me about being a potential guest. And even though I didn't want to, you know, I had to you know, I understand synchronicity. I understand following the signs and how everything is connected. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And I really do uh, believe God leads us through synchronicity. And um, so I emailed the person and set up a date. You know, I, I rationalized it, went back and forth because I'm still iffy about it. But um, we did it and we're going to have a good conversation. That person is lined up on the show to come, I believe, at the end of the month. So uh, stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. But um, and there's been several guests in the past, people I have no idea who they are. And, and I'll, you know, in my inbox, people are like, hey, check out this guy, check out this person. You know, so I kind of I kind of pull from that pool. But the the synchronicities are like the main way. It's like the breadcrumbs because it's like the doors that are opening. The go the, go here, do this, send that email, write this song, talk about this continue with this and all of these confirmations and in that uh relationship with the spirit of god with the breath of god leading us in relationships all of this stuff what to do don't get in over your head pace yourself don't get burnt out you know what i'm saying all of this stuff now so those are my encounters right now like those are the spiritual encounters that i'm having um we did a ce5 initiative um maybe three months ago where we planned every, uh, it was the the new moon and, um, three months ago, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe it was May. I'm not sure, but, or April. And, uh, we did a global thing. We started promoting it and, uh, all of, we all went out together all over the, the world. Really I had people in Australia trying to go out too. you know, shout out to people over there. Um, going out together at this, this time that I set and was and I, I led a meditation or just a quick prayer, really, and just kind of getting everybody into a space where they would have their own encounter. And we all went out and we had the encounter together. It was beautiful. I seen, um, I think we seen four, me and my wife seen four uh, light ships and uh, had that had that telepathic communication and just connecting with nature, um, the lightning bugs everywhere. Just a beautiful encounter of connecting back with nature, grounding and um, sending forth the high vi- higher vibrations out to make contact with the angelic beings that are watching over us. So Christy uh, folks is in chat. She says it was May 15th. She went out. This was her first time going out, trying anything like that. And um, she had a beautiful encounter with her family. Synchronicities led them out there. Hey, you know, things come on the TV that they were, you know, there's aliens on TV and all kind of stuff that uh, it was just synchronicities, man of just understanding that, look, I'm open. I'm open for whatever's next for me. And so we still do that. So it's not like I'm, I'm closed off to anything spiritual. Trust me. I still do my rape, still microdose, you know what I'm saying? All of these kind of things. So it's part of my life, but those are just like parts of like the maintaining it and staying connective. And there's practical things we do to stay connective. So don't, please don't, take take me as you know negating these encounters as that but i'm saying when does it stop or or when is it enough when do you get like how many angels does it take to approach you before you walk through that door to kind of do what you're supposed to be doing what you feel on the inside or for you to receive a message an impartation a spirit to go forth and bring forth those things that God has put within you to find out what, what it is. How many ayahuasca ceremonies, how many psilocybin encounters, how many demons, how many angels? Christy says one. Christy, Christy Lee says one. Biblically, it was definitely one. And these people were led by miracle, by miracle, by miracle, by miracle. And, and many times we're led by miracles, right? Um, as, a, as a place of provision, but... So we can walk on our own. 
But I'm, I'm asking you that as a question, as a rebuke. What are you chasing? What are you looking for? What are you waiting for? You want another one? So after the next one, then you're going to go. For those of you who have never had an encounter with the divine and you don't know what I'm talking about, I encourage you, seek it out. Seek it out. I think it's good. It's beautiful. Um, there's a lot of faith. There's a lot of stuff imparted, creativity, um, an inner knowing, sense of awe and wonder and inspiration. There's so much stuff that comes from an angelic encounter, an ET encounter, so much that comes from it. Um, but that is not the end goal. The end goal is not that I have a friend who's an alien who watches over me. Like, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Trust me, right now, as you're listening to this, there's angels around you now. There's spirits. There's leeches. There's all types of energies, good and bad and negative. Whatever you do, your lifestyle reflects and feeds them. They try to there's so much going on. Everything is supernatural. There's so much in, in the different realms of density that's going on around us with the different dimensions. Trust me. So it's learning how to connect into spirit, which Christy Lee beautifully says in the chat, right? At this perfect time, connect to spirit. That's what it's about. Tap in, tune in, learn how to connect for yourself. Um, so we'll, we'll approach this too. So here's a, here's a Christian point of view. It's like, okay, why are you guys talking to aliens why are you guys channeling summoning angels fairies gnomes salamanders the enchanters dance with the fairy on the oleander why are you guys getting into this stuff when you can go straight to the source you can go straight to jesus you can go straight to the holy spirit and uh and bypass all of these other things i think that each and every one of those serve a purpose and a place and understanding whether it's contacting them or wanting to see them is simply just to know that it, it exists, that it's real. And I'll say this, when I would be out praying, fasting, wanting God to show me these angels, to show me these UFOs, Whatever you want to call them, whatever your theology helps you to break break it down as, that's between you and God. But for me, there were the angels. There were the seraphim, the cherubim. I called them by name. I asked God if they were real, if they were out there watching over us, doing war over humanity, protecting us. If they had my greatest good in mind, Father God, would you please allow me to see them? I'm begging you. Allow me. If you're up there trying to connect started seeing them right simple as that i wanted it more than anything started seeing crazy things in the sky in the night sky okay rationalize it it's in the night sky what about the day sky god can i see anything during the day started having crazy visions during the day seeing all types of ufos and angelic entities in the sky and and lights and jets trying to fly towards these orbs and things just crazy things man that just blew my mind and it wasn't for the sake of just seeing it for me. It wasn't for the sake of just, oh, I seen it. I seen this. I seen that. You know, that's there, right? You're happy. You're excited. But for me, it made it more real. It made it more real. It, like, my studies of heaven versus what I've been told about heaven, of this abode where God dwells, this abode where the angels are like it's another dimension like you die and you're all you're there maybe it's in the sky maybe it's somewhere else but to understand that look these angels are real they're physically somewhere out there they have the ability to travel back and forth from heaven to earth there's a place when they're in the sky and they're coming back and forth from heaven to earth they're coming from somewhere they have abodes they have dwelling place they have what's known as the host of heaven the angelic armies of god are watching over us as fleets of what many will call ufos we'll call ifos identified flying objects these are the fleets of jehovah the fleets of yahweh that are watching over us and they will communicate god will open up the eyes of your understanding to see them just like in the scripture uh where elijah was with the young man who the invading armies were coming in and they were all in scared they were encumbered 
by other armies and the guy was freaking out. Elijah prayed that God would open his eyes that he would be able to, to see the chariots that are aligned all within the mountains. Elijah prayed for the young man. The young man's eyes of his understanding were opened and he was able to see the armies that were fighting for him. And the scripture says that greater are they that are for us than those that are against us. Beautiful story. We've done it many times where we go out and people want to see something. We pray, we believe, we receive, we go out and expect it. And it happens. If you go out there and you're not expecting anything, you're not going to see anything. But if you go out there and you want it more than anything and you want to encounter, there's nothing that's going to stop that. It may take more than one night. It may take three, four, five nights. It may, it's different for everybody. Um, you may go out every night. You see stuff every night. It's different for everybody. Let your eyes adjust, be able to see the stars and these type of things to have your own encounter. Because I don't think anyone can rob you from that encounter. That is your inner knowing. Nobody can take that from you. We talk about faith in God. I don't have faith in God no more. I don't believe in God no more. I know God. Nobody can talk me out of that. I could talk you out of your beliefs. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube. There's a bunch of people with different doctrines and belief systems. And some of them are angry. Some of them have vendettas against the church. Some of them have vendettas against God, against Christ. They have the ability to talk you out of your faith, to talk you out of your belief. But if you know God as a father, if you know God as a mother, if you know God as a friend, if you know God as an inner essence, if you know it, nobody can take that from you because you know it. That's the power of, of, of understanding and, and knowing versus having faith in what someone said. It's a difference. It's a big difference there. So those encounters, man, they birth an inner knowing that something is out there. I may not know what it is. You may not be able to articulate it and, and say what I do question a lot of people. You know, I'm supposed to have uh, Laura Eisenhower. They can name you all the races of aliens and what their agendas is and what they look like. And they can do all this kind of stuff. I'm interested. Doesn't mean I believe it. Um, I do question that. Um, but there's a knowing there may not be able to articulate it and write a book and sell it and recreate it. You know what I'm saying? Recreate the encounter of who those are and what they are. But you, you have an inner knowing of what it is for you. And just to know that something exists that's greater than you that can communicate with you telepathically. Been communicating with you. You don't even know it. I believe that we go within to commune with those out there. I believe we can look out there to commune with those that are already within us. The, the, the spirit of God that dwells within us. The, there's many spirits that are around us. Not a bad thing. People want to go, you say, well, why would you do that? You can go straight to God, straight to the Holy Spirit. I believe that. I believe that we can go straight to Christ. I believe we can go straight to God. Like if you understand the gospel, the gospel is the essence of uh, Jesus tearing down anything that stood in the way between you and God. And now you have boldness and free access to approach the throne of God. So that's what the, that's what the gospel is. You can go straight to God. But God uses everything god uses demons people hate it when i say that you have to be <laughs> you probably hate it when i say that if you're going through it you know what i'm saying i would hate it too but when i'm going through it but in hindsight you have to look at everything you have to look at your trials you have to look at your tribulations the good and the bad and weigh it all together and understand, look, God was in that. God was in my darkest moment. He never left me. He never forsake, forsook me. But there were things that he had to impart to me that I wouldn't have got anywhere else unless I went through that. Unless I went through this ab abusive r relationship, I wouldn't have known my worth or what true love is when someone really loves me. Having people tell me they love me my whole life. But until I went through that abusive relationship, I didn't know what it was like. I thought that was love. Until now I met someone who cherishes me for who I am. You know, you go to a church where you're slandered, you're laughed at, 
You're just another number, another face in the crowd. You have to leave that to in order when you when you finally go to a circle of 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 people um, where you're wanted versus being in a group of people where you're tolerated. You you wouldn't appreciate that unless you were just another face in the crowd. You go through all of these things and, and to, to learn character traits and impart character, which the scripture says that we learn from adversity and we learn. And, uh, and this is prom- promised to a believer. Like you're going to go through that stuff. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be laughed at. You're going to be forsaken. A servant is not greater than their master. If you want to be like Jesus and you want to go about doing good and healing humanity, bringing healing to the nations, being a light worker, you're going to have some opposition. You're going to have opposition from spirits and you're going to have oppositions from people, which the spirits are working through the people. Your battle is not of flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities in the heavenly realms. That's who you're dealing with. You're not dealing with the people. It's not the person who has a personal vendetta with you. You represent something that they don't like, that spirit don't like. Whatever spirit that is that you're dealing with. It's not about you. Don't take it personal. Be water, my friend. Let it flow off of you. Learn to get thick skin. Don't walk around looking to be offended, looking for people. You know, it's going to come. But don't let it set in. Do not let it set in. That's what it's about. All of this stuff that we've gone through, like I said, I don't believe that I don't believe in lost time. I believe that I believe that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. I believe that everything that we do everywhere we go, even if it seems that it was time lost, even if it seems that we were abandoned, we were forsaken. God will never leave us nor forsake us. We can go places. We can try to run from God. There's nowhere you can go to run from the spirit of the Lord. Like he's always watching over you, always got you. And there's things that we do to try to numb, numb that, that chastising, that chasing Try to quiet out the voice. We're not ready. So we're doing all this stuff, you know, whatever it is. You're trying to prolong your calling. You're scared of your calling because your calling is too big. If your calling don't scare you, your dreams and goals don't scare you. You need a new calling. You need a new dream. It's going to scare the piss out of you, man. It's got to be so far out of your realm of thinking that only God can do it. Only God can do it. And that's how God gets the glory. We talk about that time and time again. It's like God takes nobodies and creates somebodies. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You have that calling. You're marked as a child. You know within you're supposed to co- come forth and do great things. You might not even know what those great things are. You may not even know what it is, but it's when you reach down and you're able to go in and pull it out and manifest it. This is why this podcast exists. How do we do that? Is it about repeatability with angelic encounters? Maybe. Just to know that you're connected, right? I mean, come on. It wasn't just a whim. Maybe it takes more than one. It took me more than one. (laughs) So I can't put expectations on y'all that I don't hold myself to. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, like, there comes, there's a number somewhere. (laughs) There's a number somewhere of these angelic encounters. Somewhere there's a number. But it's just to know that you're connected and to know that it's real. The rational mind is uh, um, wars against, you know, the uh, the subconscious mind, the carnal mind is the enemy to God. You know what I'm saying? We do war against the the flesh. We do war against our own faith and our own inner knowing of of understanding is like, trust me, when you have these encounters, write them down, write them down because you're going to try to talk yourself out of them. (laughs) Was that a flock of seagulls? Was that swamp gas? Was that a falling star? You should have been with us yesterday on um, on Discord. We have our Discord community. It's in the in the description if you guys want to join. 
but yesterday we explored the fact the uh the, the fact that the testament of solomon talks about the shooting stars and what they are and how we interact with them and what mankind thinks that they are we we approach that through uh uh, the testament of solomon i read that and it was just a new realm of understanding of feeling like they're majestic feeling like they may they may not be space debris falling so plug for our discord you're looking for community and take this thing on a daily basis that's where we are discord link you can download it on your phone or your computer just a quick plug but that's what it's about it's about connecting and about knowing write that stuff down so you know like you can easily talk yourself out, but eventually you're like, okay, these are a bunch of encounters. If I had all of these encounters, one of these got to be real. One of these had to be an angel. One of these had to be a messenger. One of these had to be an ET, a Pleiadian. One of these light ships that were communicating me, communicating with me, excuse me, had to be real. One of them. When you just, and I think that's why we try to, you know, have a, a repeatability and want to have more encounters. Um, speaking of repeatability, that's a quote from Terrence McKenna. Um, Terrence McKenna, the uh, philosopher, uh, psychonaut, would would say that he would speak in the uh, UFO community and UFO circles at times, and he said, "What we in the drug community have that you." in the ufo community don't have he said is repeatability repeatability where i'm able we're able to take five grams of psilocybin and meet with these beings the golden teachers the light beings the angels we're able to take five grams and go in and see the elves the elves that repair your dna you know all of these things we can repeat that. We can go in and, and, and do it. Um, he says in the UFO community, you don't have that. You just got to hope and just hope that it happens. But that's what he said. I don't believe that. I can't do it at will. Like people go out there and they have cameras on them and say, oh, we're going to do it. But if the intention's right and the heart's right, I don't think you can go in there, uh, go out there just to like for your clout for the video, you know what I'm saying? Do it for the vine, do it for the gram. You know, I don't think it's about that. Cause I think that they can feel your intentions and your emotions, man, that you're going out there with. Um, so going out there open and wanting people to experience the awe and the wonder. I think if you go out there with an open heart and an open mind, I think you're going to have an encounter. Um, we look at, I talk about this a lot, James, um, Gilliland um coming on uh he he did a uh a, a bbs presentation or he was on a bbs presentation where danny dyer and this is really good y'all y'all haven't seen this it's a documentary danny dyer on the uh bbs bbc um programming in, in the uk uh he was going to all these groups trying to um find UFO life, alien life, contact UFOs. So he goes all over the world. There's all these different places in different countries of all these people who send forth radio signals into the universe. They send forth love and vibration and they put it through cathode tubes and stuff and try to send it out. And these different groups that he has met with that they all have um, so-called repeatability he goes and he wants to to learn. He's a TV host or something like that over there. Um, he wants to learn. He wants to see something. He goes out and travels all over. He doesn't see anything. At the end of the documentary, he goes to comes to America and goes to James Gilliland's Isetti Ranch. Shout out to Davy Jones. I believe Davy Jones is who it was was taunting me from. Um, from uh, East Eddie Ranch letting me know that they were there the other day on, in the comment section. Um, but he goes to James Gilliland's ranch in Trout Lake, Washington at Mount Adams. And, you know, they have a UFO watchtower. They have um, all of this stuff, but they also do spiritual practice. They meditate. They do Qigong practice, breath work, the inner work 
setting themselves up before they go out. And then when they go out, they're having all types of encounters. They're having encounters with, uh, with lights and things communicating and flickering with them and stopping on a dime and saying hello. Telepathic communication, the awe and wonder is there. That's big for me. Um, but they're also having encounters with these orbs that are flying through the people that they're picking up. And I'm not talking about just a little take a picture and you see an orb. I guess showing up on camera. These orbs that are flying around people and like really beautiful, interesting stuff. So they're doing the spiritual work and they're having contact and it's repeatability. Um, Danny Dyer goes there. He does the breath work. He does the Qigong. He does all of this stuff. And he ends up having an encounter. He's like, man, I'm coming here to see UFOs and like I'm having a spiritual awakening. And he's like really going within and and, and uh, c- connecting with, with the spirit from that. And then he goes out, UFO watchtower. They all go out into the field in the open sky and they all have angelic encounter. They see UFOs and mind is blown. In his closing words as he's leaving the ranch, he, uh, like I said, he was looking for something out there. But in order to kind of make contact, you have to be able to go within to make contact. It's within and without. People are wanting, like, you know, I talked to a, a, a woman yesterday on Discord, and she was just saying uh, she wants to be able to not be afraid to have this face-to-face communication with ETs or or angels or whatever, I guess. Um, most people probably never never will have that face to face encounter um as something that materializes in the um physical realm in their house, like a literal entity alien person or whatever angel walking through your home material materializing, but you have to be able to know that the communication is gonna be when you go within when you go within and you look within and you're able to communicate there. Then, when you open your eyes and you stargaze, you're able to connect in the physical realm. You have to be able to do it in the spirit first. Everything is birthed in the spirit first. Everything is birthed in the astral realms and the ethers. Sometimes it takes years to, to birth these type of things and these, these inner knowings. But once you understand it, once you open your eyes, then you can go out there with uh, certainty that you're going to have an encounter. You can go out there and know how to do it. Once you've been, once you understand telepathic communication, once you want to see stuff, they'll tell you where the where to look. Like it gets that deep. Like you go out there and there's a billion stars on a beautiful night. You don't see nothing. They say, "Hey, look over here." Okay, look up. Bing. They shine at you. Let you know. Pow. Some of them are just like shine real bright, like a pop. Pow. See this bright light. And that's it. They're just letting you know, hey, look over here. Fire. That's it. Wow. And it's like, wow. Okay, look over here. Kaya. I really believe that um, that they're taking a chance when they do that. I do believe that our government, the space force, if you want to call it that, are fighting against these, these angels. Um, the information that was imparted to me was that they're trying to shoot them down. There's footage of them shooting them down. There's footage of them... Um, shooting up plasma beams to outer space, old, old footage from space, trying to shoot these things out of the air. Bunch of crazy stuff. So I believe that that's why there's not a lot of footage or, or like a lot of encounters. I like, wouldn't that suck if you willed one to show up that if one wanted to show itself to you, if you made connection and it appeared for you and then Donald Trump shot it out the sky <laughs> Wouldn't that suck if it happened because you did that? You know? Hey, where are you at? Can you materialize? Let me see you. Okay, here I am. Bye-bye. Donald. No, Donald. Why'd you do it? Just a thought. But that definitely was uh, communicated to me whenever I was seeing them. That, uh, and I, I've seen jets flying to them. It said, look, look over here. Here I am. Being, I can't stay long. They're trying to get me out the sky, and the jet's flying right towards it. Before the jet got there, it disappears. Crazy stuff. Understanding what's going on, the spiritual warfare, 
Um, Edgar Cayce believed that the Battle of Armageddon would be fought in outer space. There's a galactic war going on, and we did a whole episode on this with the whole space, Donald Trump space wars thing. If you want to go back and listen to that, definitely do that. It's one of the highest rated shows on, on iTunes right now. But um, talked about the space war, talked about what's going on with that, and just because they let us know about that now, they've been doing that. That's old news. All the stuff you've seen in the movies, the Star Wars, Galactic Federation, all of this stuff, this is old. This is old. They're just letting us know about this. They, they, it's crazy. All the technology you see in the movies, they already have. I think they say we're 50 years behind what they let us know. 50 years. It's crazy. I will let you guys know, we were supposed to go live with Laura Eisenhower, the great granddaughter of Dwight Eisenhower, who, uh, she speaks at all the big circles and, uh, in the, the circuits and everything. And, awesome woman uh does the spiritual work as well as the um contacting the the ships and things like that um gonna be a good guest we're supposed to go live with her today something happened um i just checked my email she says for some reason my notifications didn't go off wow i really missed an interview can we do this tomorrow or this afternoon sorry i let you down we're gonna do it whether it's tomorrow or this afternoon, <laughs> we're going to do it. So be on standby for Laura Eisenhower um, coming on the podcast, whether this evening or um, or tomorrow morning. Maybe tomorrow morning, actually. We'll probably just reschedule for tomorrow morning and do that. So be on the lookout if you guys want to join that and ask her some questions and stuff like that. Also thinking about um, opening up the phone lines again. You know, some people, uh, I haven't done that in a while. Um, sometimes when I would do it, people would call in if it was a big guest. Usually at night, people call in. Sometimes during the day, people are at uh, at work and stuff like that, so they, they can't call in. So uh, thinking about opening it back up, we'll see. So yeah, there's going to be a podcast tomorrow. I'll just schedule her uh, 10, 10 o'clock tomorrow, Central, whatever time you're listening to this, you know, same time tomorrow. Um We'll do that. I have an interview right after this. I don't think it's going to be live. I'm pretty sure it's going to be an edited interview, but I have an interview with, uh, what is these people called? So y'all can look for me on there. Hopefully it goes good. Let's see. I forgot the name. Okay. Um, they, anyway, this, this isn't it, but it's called like the super, super podcast. It's a podcast network where they have like, super kids super musicians i think i'm going to be a super musician i think that's what i'm going on as but they also cover spirituality superpowers super abilities so they that's their network their super channel or whatever and they have all these different hosts who cover okay, this is music this is the spirituality this is the entrepreneurship or whatever um doing that so i'm going to be on their podcast uh, immediately after this um but I think it will be, I don't think it'll be live, but I'll let y'all know, tune in. Uh, if you're not on Discord, the party continues on Discord after this. So look at the link in the description, uh, join Discord and get on your phone, stay tapped in and tuned in with us wherever we go. Uh, I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you again for all of the support. Everybody who's been donating, everybody who is uh, um spending your hard earned money to keep me on the air and to keep my music flowing and coming. Thank you guys for being enablers, enabling me to do this. And I couldn't do it without you again. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you want to support, please head to patreoncom backslash true seeker. Um, you get some really good stuff. All my music's over there, sign up and you get 10 albums. It's 200 songs, you know? So, um, some really good stuff there. It'll change your life. Make sure you do that with that. I'm gonna say peace. And shalom. I love each and every one of you guys. And we'll do it again tomorrow, actually. Peace, peace. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.